Welcome back everyone. Time for the next part of the project. Let's get started. My name is Cassie and you're watching The Victorian Thimble. I'm glad you could join me for another part of the Making Duchess of Cambridge's outfit. I'll just remind you the scope of this project. This is an outfit that Kate Middleton wore to a wedding as a guest in August of 2009. She wasn't even married to Prince William at this point in time. But when I saw this outfit, guys, I just fell in love with it. This beautiful periwinkle blue brocade cotton jacket, and it's covering a silk dress in a light, soft, pale gray. You can see the dress underneath the jacket has this beautiful soft flow and movement to it. And then you have the beautiful brocade jacket on top, just gives the whole outfit structure and just speaks to the moment that it's in as a wedding guest. I think it's such a beautiful outfit guys that I just decided I had to make a version of this my own. While I couldn't find the exact fabric that she has, I did come up with a beautiful navy blue and silver grey uh, brocade fabric and then I have this beautiful soft rayon fabric here so it's a manufactured silk and just a soft textured floral grey for the actual dress. Just as a reminder, the project that we're doing is designer dress by Bagley Mishka. The pattern is out of print at your local fabric store, but can be found on some Etsy shops if you shop around. So if you wanted to sew along with me, you can get your hands on this pattern still. And so just a reminder, I'll show you a picture of the back of the dress as well. This dress has a scoop neckline, a structured waistline with all the decorations around the waistline, and then it has a flared swing skirt at the bottom. I think this is absolutely suitable to go underneath the jacket that we're going to do, and so now it's time to get started. The first thing that the project tells us to do is to warm up our iron and fuse all the fusible uh, facing pieces onto the required fabric pieces as well. So we're going to start with that. Let's go. Now you can see all the pieces are cut out and the fusible facing is attached. Now we're ready to start sewing. The next step you're going to do is stay stitch the sides where you see that I marked out with a heat erasable pen. 5 eighths of an inch on each side of the center front. Hey everyone, so now you can see we do have the top of the dress sewn. Um, it does look a little baggy here but I have a bigger chest than this model does, so that's why it's not sitting quite right there. Um, we, I haven't filled out the chest. If it does need tweaking when I get further along, I will tweak it. But in any event, here we have our princess seams on the side fronts of the dress attached to the scoop front neck. Now we're going to start doing the same thing for the back. Okay everyone, so here's the back of the dress assembled and I just wanted to go over with you that we have the two side seams coming down either side here, and then the zipper will end up going down the center. I just have the seam allowance overlapping right now, but you can see the back of the dress has turned out quite smooth and even. It's working up attractive. Now we're gonna move on to the next steps. Now the directions call for us to sew the side seams together. I'm gonna sew the side seams where they are, but if you all recall, I am gonna to have to take it in about a half an inch on each side, but I did wanna get everything assembled first, and before I attach the skirt, skirt bottom, I'll adjust that side fit. So for now, I'm stitching it exactly as it was cut, is how it's gonna be sewn. The next step that we're doing is we're print pinning the center waist pieces to their side back pieces. Attach them on either side. See you on the next side of that.
right, everyone. Now we have the top of the dress assembled here, but it's only the outer layer at this point. The facing and the lining are not attached, the zipper's not in, but we have assembled the bodice top of the dress. And as you can see, it does include princess seams, both front and back, or arch seams on the back. I don't know if we call them princess seams on the back, do we? You know what, if you know, put the comment down below, because sincerely, I do not know if those arched um, seams on the back, are they called princess seams too? Or is it just a curved seam? And then coming up in the bodice, this starts even at the waist. This seam goes straight across the back each time evenly. But then on the front here, as you can see, it curves up into the bust area almost of the dress and then back down. The second one has a much more graduated um, curve. I think the design is really beautiful because it gives a lot of visual interest and just the, the lines of it are also very figure flattering for most. So I think it's a great design. And then I wanted to show you um, what I'm going to do for accent here is um, I, I literally bought these beads at the dollar store because I went to a place that we have in Canada called Michael's Craft Store and um, I think the USA has a place called hobby lobby that sounds like it might be a similar you know it's a giant arts and crafts store you can get flower stuff there framing stuff there and every arts and crafts thing you can imagine right so anyways i went to michael's craft store and i am telling you guys do you know like so i strung these beads but do you know if you went to the craft store and you saw about this much it would be looped like this with a little you know, cardboard thing at the top, or if you're lucky, it would have a third strand like that, you would pay Canadian pricing eight to $10. It's so expensive, right? It's so expensive. I've already spent good money buying all the resources for the dress and the jacket that I, accessorizing the dress wasn't meant to cost more. And I'm gonna show you why I wanted to accessorize is um, the, pattern here you can see that um, in the design let me see if you can see this in the camera yeah so you can see here in the design um, it's even in the paper um, drawing design it's factored in that they intend part of the design here to be that you embellish it right so the thing is um, this is going under a very fancy jacket if I will remind you have this stored on the chair over there anyways but I will remind you that going over top of this uh, lovely dress is going to be this fabric like this for the jacket right so you can start to see how this look is gonna come together and be complementary. this is sort of a bit of a periwinkle gray shade that we have going on in here that again I feel these are very complementary to each other so um, so what I came up with for the embellishments for the dress, I literally went to the dollar store, guys. The dollar store. I'll show you what about. Because I did have to go back and get more, but I literally bought these. And uh, the, I looked at the little gray. I had bought another one that had like for $4 and you get all these different beads. And they were some of them were really cool colors, but I'm like, it's gonna overpower what I want this to do because the dress underneath in this outfit, if you recall, it's meant to be silky and flowing, but it's a quiet piece. That jacket's doing the talking in this outfit, right? And the jacket's probably gonna be on much of the day, most of the day probably. I'm sure in the evening, if we start to dance or something, um, the jacket would come off, but otherwise um, I'm probably gonna be wearing the jacket for an awful lot of the function. So therefore, I don't want the dress that's underneath to be taking away from this. So I had bought these and I thought, I think this is gonna match. And when I got home, it does work up like this. I think it's perfect. And the reason I think it's perfect is because it's a soft pale gray like the dress, but the each bead is slightly different color. They are glass beads, so in terms of washing or pressing this, the beads should stand up like they're not plastic. Um, but here's what I plan to do is um, 
I just need one strand to demonstrate to you. I thought the best way to embellish this dress so that it's complementary to the jacket, but honors the design that the designer had with this being embellished, is I've made these and I'm just gonna, like this, string it along the, uh, <laughs> string it along the um, seam there, and then the seam along there, like that as well. Okay, so I think you can see how this is going to, um, there, it's going to add further visual interest to the outfit. It will um, level up the, the level of glamour to the outfit when you add the beads. It, it definitely makes it more dressy and it, it removes it from ever being something you're going to wear to the office, I'm guessing, right? But anyways, I want this to be for going out. I'm okay with it being set aside for special occasion use only. And I really do think that the dollar store of all places gave me the perfect match for this dress and so affordable. And so here's how we can cut some corners um, is we can do some things like this ourselves, like stringing our own beads. I just used the buttonhole thread that I have. It's thick, it's almost like a cord. Um, but it's thinner than cord because it is thread, right? It's perfect for stringing the beads, more durable than normal thread. Um, I chose black because if anything separated, I felt it would be less noticeable on the outfit. So anyways, guys, one of the reasons that I do these things like on this channel, sharing projects like this where we're, we're stealing Kate Middleton's look, we're gonna make this outfit for ourselves is um, that it's like, I love the idea that with the gift and the skill of sewing, and if you have a couple of machines at your resource um, or one machine with many functions, um, you can make almost anything um, on your own at home. And so this is where the Duchess of Cambridge wears this coat. I don't know what she paid for it as a you know, not newlywed, like she wasn't married when she bought the coat. But the point is, it is designer. And um, uh, next video, I'll tell you the name. It's Jane Troughton, like T-R-O-U-G-H-T-O-N. That's the designer's name, but I'm not sure I have the last name quite correct. Jane Troughton or Troughton or something like that. But anyways, it's a designer piece. And so, you know when you look in the magazines or you see stuff online and you're seeing all these designer high, high-end um, labels and you know that if you were to try and buy that jacket or buy that dress, it's like, oh, that'll just be $1,500 or that'll just be $6,000, why not, right? I mean, the pricing can just get so wildly expensive because you are paying for a fashion designer that has true artist capabilities if they can design such beautiful things to mold around the human body and make it look great in multiple sizes too. I, I think it is a true artistic gift so I do understand why designer stuff costs more that way, right? But you guys know at the end of the day um, the actual fabric something's constructed from there's only so many options, right? And so the actual raw cost of making that outfit isn't what you pay retail, right? So when we have the skill that we can sew, we could draft patterns, we can work off of patterns, manipulate them if need be, anywhere you are in your sewing journey, don't you love this idea that you could look at the latest from, you know, Carolina Herrera, DKNY, Christian Louboutin, who, pick your designer. That, there's so many, I, Calvin Klein, I could keep naming them, right? Um, there's so many gifted designers in the world. Um, and wouldn't it be neat if for those of us middle class, working class people who work long, long hours and you know, life's expensive and you only have so much extra cash, right? And so most of us don't have tens of thousands of dollars for our wardrobe. It's more in the hundreds to thousands, um, you know, inside of a year to five years, like depending where you shop, how you shop, you know what I mean? But the point is, um, some of these designer outfits are what 
some of us might spend on clothing in a year. And so this is where I love this idea that you and I together, we can use this skill and we can recreate anything in the world we want to wear ourselves. And I'm inviting you to keep coming on that sewing journey with me. So I'm pretty excited to be doing this. Guys, I know when it comes to stealing Kate Middleton's look, the gray dress underneath, it's a bit of a flexible thing because I could never find an actual picture of that little gray dress anywhere to know what it looked like. So I took the elements that I knew, scoop neckline, pale soft gray, silk-like texture because you could see it flowing in the pictures even like you could see the flow of the fabric the way it drapes so nice so this is where I came up with what I did for a pattern to use underneath it but I know I'm taking a bit of artistic um, liberties here that um, it's just a gray dress that I chose to put under the coat so bear with me guys stay with me on this sewing journey because First of all, the exciting parts are gonna happen. This dress is gonna take real shape soon and I'm gonna have something to model for you. But then the exciting part of making that beautiful brocade jacket is coming next. So I hope you'll sew along with me and join me on this sewing journey. And uh, maybe you could buy the same jacket pattern that I did because that's still available retail in the stores. You could pick up some fabric of your choice and you could sew along with me as we remake Kate Middleton's wedding outfit from August 2009. That's it for today, everyone. I'll see you next time with your needle and thread at the Victorian Thimble. Bye.